In this video, we will talk about the active transport across plasma membrane. When we talk of active transport, that means it is with expenditure of energy, that is ATP. And we have already understood that in active transport, 100% substance can be taken in. The first example where active transport takes place is known as sodium potassium pump. Whenever we use the word pump, we are talking about a protein which works with expenditure of ATP. And here we have used sodium and potassium. That means this protein must be helping in transport of sodium potassium. So if this is the plasma membrane and if we draw one intrinsic protein which is acting as the sodium potassium pump, this pump is going to use the energy which is released from the hydrolysis of ATP. One ATP molecule, it dissociates and when it dissociates, we get ADP that is adenosine diphosphate and inorganic phosphate is released. And during this splitting, when the phosphate bond breaks, energy is released. This protein, that is the pump, is going to use this energy to transport three sodium ions out of the cell in exchange of two potassium ions into the cell. Here, the numbers are fixed. With expenditure of one ATP molecules, three sodium ions are pumped out in exchange of two potassium ions. This number is very important and one protein is helping in this transport. So we call it sodium potassium pump. We will also take up one example which is due to this type of transport. If this type of transport continues, what's going to happen is there would be more sodium ion concentration outside the cell. So sodium ions concentration is continuously increasing because of this. These sodium ions, when they come back into the cell, and why would they come back? They would want to move from higher concentration to lower concentration. They're higher to their lower. So when these sodium ions come in, they bring in glucose along with it. So along with it, glucose also comes in. Now, the questions which are asked on this, should the transport of glucose be called active or passive? The answer is it will be called active only. Now let us see why we are calling it active because here we are not showing any ATP breakdown. Let us come back to the sodium potassium pump. What, had, what has happened here is ATP dissociated, energy released. That means energy is used up here. And because of this, sodium ions were pumped out in exchange of potassium ion. This active transport has resulted into a condition. The condition is there is a higher concentration of sodium outside and whenever concentration of a solute is higher, it tends to move from higher to lower concentration. And when it is coming inside the cell, it is bringing this glucose in. Would this condition arise if the first step does not take place? The answer is no. That means this condition is the result of active transport. So here we use two terms. This one where directly energy is coming from ATP, we call it primary active transport. And when the substances are moving in due to the reaction or the result of the primary active transport, then this transport is known as secondary active transport. The difference is, in case of the primary, you actually see the ATP getting hydrolyzed and 
the substances are moving because of that energy. And in secondary active transport, the conditions which result due to primary active, they are responsible for movement of the substance. So here, because this condition is due to ATP, which is helping in transport of glucose later on, we also consider this as active transport. But because there is no direct involvement or hydrolysis of ATP, we call it secondary active transport. We will add two more words to these two types of transports. In this case, that is when we are talking of sodium potassium pump or primary active transport, one protein is helping in transport of two substances in opposite direction. So here what is happening is one protein transports two substances in opposite direction. And that is why this type of transport is known as antiport. So we call it antiport. Antiport. Because they are moving in opposite direction and it is only one protein which is helping here. In this case, the protein is helping in transport of two substances again, but the substances are moving in the same direction. We call it Symport. Symport means movement of two substances by one protein in the same direction. So using these two examples, we have understood what exactly have, uh, mean, we mean when we say primary active and secondary active. And Antiport symport terms are used whenever one protein helps in transport of two substances. If they are going in opposite direction, it will be antiport. And if they, these two are coming in the same direction, it would be symport. Now the question is, where are these sodium potassium pumps found? The location, sodium potassium pump locations. The location of sodium potassium pump, number one, is the membrane of neurons. And neurons means basically the membrane of the entire nerve fiber. It has sodium potassium pump. And because of this sodium potassium pump, the membrane has more positive charge on the outer side as compared to the inner. We call it electropositive on the outer side electronegative on the inner side and this property helps in the transfer of impulse. So impulse gets generated and it moves on the membrane because of these kind of charge distribution. This is one place. The second place where we find sodium potassium pumps are the membranes of muscle fiber. Membranes of muscle fibers. On the muscle fiber also, it is the same pattern, electropositive and electronegative. And this is due to unequal distribution of the charges. So these sodium potassium pumps are present mainly on these areas where this electropositive, electronegative nature has to be maintained. Here we have taken one example that is sodium potassium pump. We can take one more example of active transport. Here we talked of two ions, so we called it sodium potassium pump. If it is helping in transport of only sodium ions, then we will call it sodium pump. Sodium pumps are found on the postsynaptic membrane. Postsynaptic membrane is the membrane of the dendrite. Whenever there is a synapse, it is between exon of one neuron and dendrite of the other. The membrane of the dendrite is known as the postsynaptic membrane. And these sodium pumps are also present on the membranes of neuron. So membrane of neuron as well as muscles. So normally wherever sodium potassium pumps are present, same places also have sodium pumps. 
The next one is third example, potassium pump. And we are calling it potassium pump. That means it is helping in transport of only potassium ions. These potassium pumps are also present on the membranes of neurons and muscles. Membrane of neurons and muscles. And it is also present on the membrane of guard cells. It helps in opening and closing of stomata. So, membrane of guard cells. So, this is where we find sodium pumps, potassium pumps separate. So, places like neurons and muscles have all three. Sodium potassium pumps are also there. Sodium pumps are also there and potassium pumps are also there. There are two more uh, active transports. One is calcium pump and the next one is endoenexocytosis. So these two we will take up in the next part.